Okay guys, this one, this knife has been in the works in the project for quite a few months now. I think ever since about July time frame. And I've been using this thing, beating the snot out of it. And in a video that I did not so far away, or not so long ago, I talked about this being my only knife option or the only knife I was using for bushcraft. So now I'm gonna do my review and overall thoughts about this knife. So let's jump into it. Obviously that's a pretty big claim to say I'm only using this knife. I will say the primary reason I am choosing to go that way or why I'm not running a whole bunch of different other knives for bushcrafting or survival practice is because I truly want to get good with one knife. And my thing is I've just had it up to here off the screen with uh, just having a whole bunch of different survival knives that I'm never using. And there's a whole bunch of excellent ones. It certainly doesn't have to be the one for you. But this is the one that I chose. And there are a few other reasons aside from me just being fed up with the knife industry uh, on why I chose this one. So now let's get into those. So starting off with this knife, one of the primary reasons why I was attracted to this knife and my original thoughts for getting this knife was that I wanted to work more on island survival, being close to water, and working with the water more hand in hand. And I'm gonna be rolling in pictures, showing you guys what I'm talking about. And so when I sat down and thought about what knife I need for working so close to the water, I wanted a knife that had a really good stainless steel. So it's not only a good steel, generally all around, but it's also very rust resistant. This is a knife that I could get wet and not really fear the steel rusting. And so that is the primary reason the S35VN is what led me to this knife. Next to that, it's also the robustness of this knife. When I did choose my one and only survival knife, I wanted to make sure that it was a knife that was not going to break, that wasn't going to give me issues as far as the thinness of the blade. So that was my next consideration or thought really, was that I wanted something robust. Now this knife is close to a quarter inch thick and definitely fits the criteria of being robust. So lastly, I wanted a knife that also had great ergonomics because the last thing I will say, if you are choosing a, one knife to be your bushcrafting knife going forward, it does need to feel comfortable in the hand and it needs to feel natural. And that it really is this knife. And I have to say, as far as the ergonomics go, it not only feels natural, but the way this micarta was done, it was not only left rough, but it was also left textured. So there's a whole bunch of essentially little protrusions in the uh, scale that grip to your skin, not in an uncomfortable way, but in a really positive way. So the knife feels very comfortable in the hand, but it also locks up into your hand very well. And uh, I've always enjoyed, since day one, I've enjoyed the hell out of these grips and I really do love the grips on this thing. They're an absolute win for me. So basically those were my three qualifications. It had to be waterproof or very water resistant and rust resistant and very keen with working in water environments. It had to be robust and it still had to be very comfortable. And so that's what landed me on the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. And also I have had in the past, you know, some of you guys know, you know, I've had a Sebenza before. So this isn't my first Chris Reeves knife. And I've always been very impressed with the quality and with the warranty on these knives. Um, it's just a really great brand. It came with a few issues of, you know, these different, uh, these different, uh, these different guards kind of got in the way, but overall, I was still able to find a very easy time choking up on the knife, doing more fine tasks. Also, due to the heavy heft of this knife, because like I said, it is a reasonably thick knife, it also did chopping very well. And I've always been impressed with the ability of this knife to just go right through material and just clean cleanly swipe right through material. I think another thing that helps with that is the fact that this is a very finely ground uh, edge and you guys can see it has a nice long grind to it. Uh, 
and then a great bevel. It's very polished edge and is extremely sharp. So its weight and its grind and bevel have helped it sail through materials like nobody's business. It's also not to mention a very good knife for batoning. Uh, it has been very great in the water. Obviously this uh, this gun coat, and this is something that I do find interesting, that this knife doesn't have just some, you know, like spray paint coat. It does have a gun coat on it. I believe the uh, gun coat is similar to a Cerakote. It has been extremely durable. There's only a few places where the coating has minorly rubbed off, primarily on this, um, where the grind starts and that is not too uncommon to see on basically any knife you baton with because that's where the most friction is put on when you baton with a knife so that's not to be unexpected but the coating is very durable the rust resistance as I have seen it and like I said I have gotten this knife wet and I've actually crossed rivers with this knife and like in its sheath on my hip and you know like waters come up into the sheath you know up to yay here and so the knife has definitely got wet in the sheath. This is a knife that I've unapologetically let get very dirty, very wet, and given it a lot of opportunity to get all nasty and ugly and rusty. But the uh, S35VN has performed very well. The edge retention too is to be expected with CPM S35VN or really good. It's definitely leaving really nothing to be designed. So like I was saying, um, the performance of this knife in forest environments, which I certainly have taken it into the forest to bushcraft, is pretty much on par with something like a Falcon even A1. Like I said though, the primary reason why I stress this as an island survival knife or as a water survival knife or you know one that's going to be in the water is because the CPMS 35 V1 <laughs> VN unlike VG10 uh, or the VG10 laminate that Falcon even uses this definitely outperforms. So lastly before we finish up the review I also will say uh, the on the sheath I'll give some notes on it I do really love this sheath it is a very modular sheath as you guys have seen in the past I easily connect my um, condor uh, eye pouch to this uh, right up here but this is a very modular pouch it has molly attachment running up the front it has some webbing attachment areas in the back the belt loop is really nice I will say it has a double velcro so essentially you set your belt in here and this conforms to your belt so if you're running an inch wide belt this will lock around that belt if you're running an inch and a half two inch belt whatever the width uh, this will conform to that and actually lock your belt in place which is really nice because on other sheaths that don't have a similar system you kind of get a sloppy sheath that when it's on your side or attached to your belt the sheath will kind of wobble like this whereas with this when it closes around your belt it locks your belt in so that there's no wobble and then you get an extra securement like that and it makes for a really tight uh, securing belt loop so I do like that and <clears throat> it does come with some extra cordage. This of course isn't paracord, but I've just left it on here because it came with it and whatever. Uh, other than that, it does have a really nice and very secure um, button closure. And just like on some other high-end knives I have uh, reviewed in the past, primarily, I think actually just the uh, Pull Force Prepper 1, uh, also had this but the interior of the sheath or in here isn't just plastic that rattles and bangs and makes all kinds of noise it does actually have a layer of felt in there to keep the knife quiet and to keep it from just banging around in there and being an obnoxious plastic piece of crap so the sheath like I said, the button fits very tightly. You can see that there is no play in this. With a lot of cheaper sheaths, you'll see, you know, the knife will come out and sometimes even expose a bit of the blade. With this, there's absolutely none of that. This is the most the knife gives. And the snap is really strong. This doesn't just pop on or off. It takes a really purposeful pull and to put on. It's also very purposeful. So 
really do like this sheath. It's actually one of the best stock sheaths I've ever got. And just out of box, it's one of those sheaths that, aside from throwing on a um, thigh strap, I didn't want to do absolutely anything to this sheath. I'd really suggest you guys take a look at this knife because it is definitely interesting and it's one of the more uncommon choices out there but I think it is really capable especially for the money it's a nice uh, survival knife and I really have no complaints about it anyways guys that's all for now god bless and I'm out